Today is June 8th, 2023, and today I'm making a video that has been a long time in the making. Today is the 60th anniversary of the first race that was run at the Greenwood Roadway. I'm holding here the poster for that event, which happened on June 8th and 9th, 1963. Over the years, I have made many videos about the Greenwood Roadway, but most of those I have only shared while giving presentations about the track. Today, I am going to publish the materials that I have received and created about the Greenwood Roadway, because I think the whole story on the Greenwood Roadway up to the modern day finally needs to be told. Greenwood Roadway was a three-mile sports car track in central Iowa, just 25 minutes from Des Moines. The construction of the track began in the fall of 1962. According to the Des Moines Register, in January of 1963, about 15% of the actual work had been done, but all of the grading was complete, and the asphalt was scheduled to be laid as soon as the frost was gone. If you were a potential investor in the track, you would have received a packet like this in the mail. Let's take a look at what was included. First, we have a card that you could send back saying that you were either interested in stock in the Greenwood Roadway or interested in a beautifully illustrated booklet on the Greenwood Roadway. And the next card is a card that you can send in with other people's names who you think might be interested in investing in the track. And we have a little pamphlet explaining who the people involved were and information about the stocks that they were selling. Here's a little business card. This is a business card for Paul Schwartz, the general manager. This is a picture from November 30th, 1962, showing that the grading was about to be completed. This is an interesting document because this timing stand was never completed. The track actually had some unique architecture planned for it, and it's very unfortunate that most of it was never built. And last, we have the brochure. It says, Sports Car Racing Comes to Iowa. I'm a huge fan of the illustrations on this brochure. We have a Cobra on the front, Austin Healy there, MGA. We have TR3. This was the proposed track map showing some of the buildings that were to be built. The most interesting building on this map is this round building here in the center. You can also see that they were going to include a small oval configuration that could be used. Here we get a better look at that round building, which was going to be called the Greenwood Roadway Lodge. This building was never built, but it shows the cool architecture that they had in mind and how neat of a racetrack this would have been. An interesting thing on this side, it says in July 1962, an estimated 60,000 spectators attended the Lake Garnett Grand Prix sports car race. And I've actually had the opportunity to race at Lake Garnett. I raced this very Triumph TR4 there. And that would have been one of the tracks that Greenwood would have been trying to compete with. We have a couple more pages. So they have big plans for the Greenwood roadway. I have here one of the original blueprints for Greenwood. This drawing is from September of 1962. This entrance right here, labeled Vehicle Crossover, is how you would get onto the track today. And then this was the grandstand area right here. This is the location of that round clubhouse, which was never built. Up over on this side is where the highway runs, and this is where the bridge was. They have another crosswalk marked right here as well as one over here. I also have another blueprint here, this one marked from January 1963, and I believe this is showing how to pave the track surface. I believe each one of these marks indicates a change in the width of the asphalt of the track. In 1963, Greenwood Roadway attracted the attention of an Iowa State University Department of Architecture student, Bill Dykus. 
Bill designed a beautiful clubhouse for Greenwood Roadway, which included a pagoda, a gatehouse, a tech inspection center, and a ski chalet. Bill hand drew an aerial view of what he was envisioning for Greenwood Roadway. His 20 inch by 30 inch drawing clearly shows how much elevation change there was at Greenwood. All of the early materials about Greenwood Roadway feature such exciting architecture that you can't help but root for them to build these amazing structures. On June 8, 1963, the first race was held. If you had come to spectate, you would have gotten this program. And if you were a driver, you would have received this dash plaque commemorating that you had raced in this event. If you were lucky enough to have won in your class, you would have received one of these mugs as an award at the race. And there were even similar mugs for winning the Concours Car Show event that was held at the race. The track record on this first weekend was set by Kurt Gonsteed in his Lotus 23. He managed to beat out the Cobra of Hayes by seven and a half seconds. Just one more race was held in September of 1963. But everything was going well and they started out 1964 strong with another SCCA race, an IKF go-kart endurance race, a US RRC race featuring Formula Vs in July, an AMA motorcycle race in August, and finishing up with another SCCA race. 1965 also started out well with an SCCA race in May, followed by an IKF go-kart enduro. But everything changed in 1965 when the USAC stock cars came to Greenwood. The USAC race in 1965 is normally blamed for the downfall of the track. These heavy, high horsepower cars supposedly tore up the asphalt that had been laid down at Greenwood. It was true that the track had been built cheaply and that the asphalt was not as thick as it should have been. But I have heard from others that it was actually problems within the SCCA itself that led to the downfall of the track. The races did continue though, all the way to the end of 1966. IKF had one go-kart enduro in 1967, but that was the end of the official racing at Greenwood Roadway. During the three years that it was open, Greenwood Roadway hosted many significant SECA and US RRC races. Some of the biggest names in racing, such as Carol Shelby, Alan Bobby Unser, Ed Leslie, Jim Hall, and more raced at Greenwood Roadway. After 1967, some very small events were held at the track, such as some SECA hill climbs. However, the track sat mostly vacant until 1987, when a group of enthusiasts got together to try to resurrect the track. And luckily, their efforts are recorded on this VHS tape. This is <clears throat> Greenwood Race Park, uh, formerly known as Greenwood Roadway, Inc., 20, 23 years ago. And uh, we're going to be buying this and get it going again as an active track. Uh, my name's Chris Fisher, and I'm the main person so far in uh, getting this venture going. And By 1987, the grass was already starting to come up through the road surface. The walking bridges that had crossed the track were still in place but were no longer usable. The buildings had sat unused and were in extreme case of decay. The maintenance was not being done on the whole facility. Even the grass on the sides of the track were not being mowed. The iconic timing and scoring tower was still there, but had obviously seen better days. Looking down from the timing tower from this same vantage point would have given you a much different view in 1963. But the track, uh, as confirmed by some uh, track experts who came to see it, is in actually good shape after 21 years of being idle. I've driven the track in this car here at substantial speeds uh, earlier this year when the weeds were down and um, it's very very comfortable to drive even now with just the weeds cleaned out. Unfortunately the efforts in 1987 to resurrect the track fell through. 
The owner of the track at this time was Shai Fadre, who had run the food concessions at Greenwood Roadway, including the Iowa State Fairgrounds, for over 50 years. He sold the track in 1999 to the Iowa Union of Operating Engineers. The operators union were using the property the track was on as a training facility. And it was under their ownership that I first visited the track in 2006. The union was not clearing away the trees that had grown up on the sides of the roadway. But they were, however, mowing the grass from the fields and keeping the grass out of the roadway. The union was open to car clubs visiting the track and getting to drive around it. I visited the track many times over the years and got to run several of my cars around the course. In 2008, a small group of people started talking about resurrecting the track, but this was only the beginning of a much larger effort to come. By 2010, the relationship between the union and the car clubs was stronger than ever. The union was respecting the track and taking care of the facility and were more than happy to have the car clubs come out and drive around the track. By December 2010, a business plan had been put together to turn Greenwood Roadway into a motorsports country club. Wilson Motorsports Incorporated was to come out and see the site to help consult converting this old vintage racetrack into something that sanctioning bodies could hold events on today. In 2013, to mark the 50th anniversary of the Greenwood Roadway, I went all out and designed a new poster in the style of the originals. I also made two designs of t-shirts. I invited everyone I knew who was into sports cars, who had raced the track originally, had worked at the track or was a corner worker there, or was even involved in the founding and creating of the track in the first place. I even created tech stickers of different colors for the event to let people know which parade lap group they would be in. I created a website for the event to let everyone know the format for the day. We would have a car show so that those people who brought their cars to the track could have them on display. We also did a series of parade laps separating out the vintage cars and the race cars from the modern cars. And we also had three seminars so that we could hear the stories of the people that raced there and worked there and created the track. And all of these seminars I recorded and I will be uploading those to my channel so that everyone can hear them. The Greenwood Revival was a huge success and sparked more interest in the track than ever. In 2014, a group of people interested in resurrecting the track met at the track to see if the track was viable to bring back. The historical structures and the track were in very bad shape by this point. But it was just about unanimous that this was a project worth pursuing and money started to be spent on a viability study. Another business plan was put together and after working on this for years, it started to look like something was actually going to happen with Greenwood Roadway. In 2015, an investor meeting was held and certain agreements about selling the property have been negotiated with the union. The group was not able to come up with all the funding within the time period spelled out by the union. An extension to the letter of intent from the union to sell the property was obtained. But a man named J.R. Pesek had heard word of what was going on at Greenwood Roadway. He didn't even want any other investors. He wanted to bankroll the entire thing. J.R. wasn't kidding around and he even signed for a contract to buy 90 acres of land surrounding the track as well as offering the union $1.9 million as well as an additional $200,000 for dirt work that needed to be done around the facility. Over the course of this entire process, the people in charge kept changing at the union and I'm not sure that anyone was ever actually communicating with the proper people. The deal fell through and JR purchased a plot of land in the Ozarks and built the Ozarks International Raceway. The Ozarks International Raceway shows us what Greenwood could have been. JR was very motivated to buy the track, but as you can guess, dealing with a union is about impossible. One year after the deal fell through with possibly the best 
chances that Greenwood Roadway would have ever had to be resurrected. Greenwood Roadway was hit by a tornado, destroying all of the Union's buildings on the property. Hopes were high that maybe the Union would want to rebuild in a different location and would put the property up for sale. The Union, however, did want to rebuild, and they rebuilt their buildings on the old Greenwood Roadway property. So where does that leave Greenwood Roadway today? The Operators Union still owns the property and is still taking good care of the track surface. As you can see, the track is still very much intact and although no longer drivable by a race car, you can still drive around it by truck. Our attempts to reach out to the Union to hold a 60th anniversary reunion were met with nothing but roadblocks. At this time, car clubs are no longer allowed to come and visit the track. This property is very much private property, and I cannot emphasize enough, do not trespass on the Union's land. Researching and preserving the history of Greenwood Roadway has been a passion of mine for a very long time. I think I have driven more sports cars around Greenwood in modern times than anyone else. There are several times where I brought two or more of my cars down to the track at once, and I have been wanting to tell the Greenwood story for a long time. It's amazing that this ghost track has existed for 60 years. Will the track remain intact to make it to 70 years? I'm not sure. And that is why over the course of the next week I will be releasing historical videos about Greenwood Roadway to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the track. Since I couldn't be there at the track this year, I felt this was the best thing that I could do. And who knows, maybe I'll see you in another 10 years and we'll get together for another Greenwood reunion.